so my name is Tracy Kirkpatrick. Uh, uh, a quick five minute talk about making your own OSM tiles based on um, something I did in my day job. I'm a sort of GIS professional, uh, so I thought I'd give you some notes. This parts of it are really technical and other parts are not so technical, so feel free to sort of chip in if you say I don't understand or I'd like more detail. Um, most things that I'll show you how to So, so I've touched on this already. I made an introduction of work in the GIS industry for a small company in Edinburgh called uh, Sigma 7. We have a proprietary map based uh, software product. It's mostly sold in utilities, primarily just because they've got a lot of stuff cables, pipes, overhead wires, and if people hit it, it's generally bad news. So they do uh, invest a lot of money in keeping their data up to date. I am a sort of reasonably active OSM data contributor. I think in any other context, I'd say I a lot of data, but probably a minimal compared to a lot of people in the room today, if I'm honest. So what this uh, project is going to give you a bit of a look at, we did this year, is with uh, Conned. They are a big electricity supply company in New York State. They want to capture a lot of data about um, storm damage. So the whole thing kind of stemmed from Hurricane Sandy last year. They were quite badly affected by that, as you can imagine. So they have this program to try and uh, coordinate a bit better during a storm and capture as much information as they can about what parts of their electrical network are down, whether or not someone's already noticed it's down, and when it's likely to be resolved, that sort of thing. Uh, as part of that, um, they, they really want to have, in much the same way as the previous speaker uh, discussed, all their data offline because if the whole electric network is down, then Wi Fi is generally not really an option. So they kind of have to have this whole thing self contained on the units that they're using. Uh, they didn't have any provision for purchasing any topographic background maps. Uh, so we, we built some OSM tiles and stored them uh, on the local places and used that with our, our software. So the first step, um, we did a prototype where we uh, used this really cool tool that I thought I mentioned, JTL Downloader. You can use it to nominate an area of the map and download those into little PNG files that you can store locally and render those at will. Uh, you do need your own tile server. You can point it at those same tiles ever if you like, but uh, it's I think generally accepted to be bad form and after not so many tiles it will begin to throttle the, the actual uh, download speech and things you get. But it was very cool for uh, the first little kind of prototype phase of this project. <coughs> Beyond the prototype, um, we had to we really ideally wanted to move away from the global Mercator projection, which is the default projection that is used for OpenStreetMap. Uh, and without going into too much detail, uh, there are a variety of sort of limitations in terms of using this in a professional context. But say there are distances on the map surface, although it's notionally in meters, as you get further away from the equator, the meters that you measure on a map are not necessarily correlated with meters in real life. Uh, so traditional coordinate systems, the British National Grid is probably the best example in the UK. Uh, don't have this problem, although there are minor uh, bumps and things in the British National Grid as well. Uh, but typically those are also used for smaller geographical areas. In this particular case, our client preferred using uh, a map coordinate system that had uh, US feet as the map units. and uh, So that, that was something that we thought we could do. So what we did is built our own tiles in uh, a map projection that was more suitable for their data. So that's probably about as much as I want to say about map projections, because it's kind of a science in itself. And I'm, I, I know a bit about it, but I wouldn't consider myself an expert. So uh, you can ask me questions if you like after. So how do we do it? Um, well, MapNIC is the bit of software that OpenStreetMap uses to build all the tiles that you see on the website. Uh, it's got really good support in Python scripting language, Python being uh, kind of the prevailing scripting language at the moment, enough Raspberry Pi theme, etc, etc. 
uh, we had to make some tweaks um, which were not really documented anywhere, uh, kind of piecing together various blogs and bits in the wiki and things like that uh, to account for the ESP map units. Uh, the background data we've already touched on, like the coastlines, those are sort of a separate part of the whole uh, map rendering process. So we uh, had to rebuild that into another coordinate system. Uh, oh yeah, you can, you know, to set a, uh, an actual extent property on some of the conflict tiles to speed up this whole process. And the last kind of issue we had really was uh, you have to set a buffer size, otherwise what can happen is if you have two tiles right next to each other and a label that's just on the right hand side of the left tile, it'll draw the first part of it and then truncate it at the end of the tile and then the next tile next to it has you know, no text. So you can, I think there are examples of that on the OSM website, but it's largely avoided by this mathematic uh, parameter to set a buffer size to say don't show a label unless it's sort of slightly further in from the edge. Effectively. So this is the result. This is uh, some of the Conia's uh, overhead network in their kind of New York State plane coordinate system. As we discussed, that's a lot easier for them to work with as right map units and distances on the ground are a lot easier to map onto the actual uh, surface. And I don't think the colours are coming out too well, but that is obviously the standard OS Intel is running in our uh, application for coming. So I put a few useful links here. As I said, if you're going to be generating tiles, you really need your own tile server. But well, there's an excellent website which tells you exactly how to do that. And even if you're not especially okay with it, it's reasonably easy to follow. There was a really useful blog post about uh, generating tiles in a Dutch kind of national uh, coordinate system, which goes through a lot of that. The MapNet configuration reference has lots of um, detail on a lot of the options which are then kind of replicated into this uh, scripting <coughs> language that we use for it. And JTL Downloader, as I mentioned, uh, is another useful tool to be aware of. So, that's that. It was supposed to be a five minute presentation, so I think I'm uh, hopefully reasonably close. And as I said, a lot of that is uh, fairly complex stuff and Python script is not presentation gold, so uh, <laughs> <laughs> is there anything you'd like me to say more on or, you know, uh, had questions about, I'm happy to take to the electrical network, so they really need a bit of context in terms of, okay, which road am I on, where am I going to find this particular fuse that I think may be bust or in a hole. I think in the context of Hurricane Sandy, like all streets of overhead equipment was just completely trashed and had to go about and rebuild the whole thing. So they have, like these green lines are a lot of that overhead network, um, but without a kind of background with the streets, the buildings, and some sort of context, it's, it's also of limited use. I mean, they have GPS, and they'll see where they are on the map, and all this sort of stuff, but um, the, the kind of background map is quite an important way of just getting the bearings and figuring out where, where they should be. Does that answer the question? Yeah, I guess it's quite a specific use case, that one, so maybe not generally, uh, the general public who doesn't maintain that infrastructure probably doesn't uh, use doesn't want to see that there, but they would find it very useful. Yeah, I mean, it's just, yeah, I mean, obviously, the, their electrical network is not part of OpenStreetMap. That's their own data, and it's not, uh, it's not licensed in a way that, I mean, as far as I'm aware, and we would get the import into OpenStreetMap. Um, so, yeah, that, that's like a, a separate kind of data set for them that's overlaid on top.
subgroups of that are uh, people that map not just power lines, but the voltage and the whole company. And so, so quite a lot of that data is available mainly in Germany, I think, because they're very good at being obsessive in Germany. <laughs> and doing stuff. Um, but do you think like, that sort of data for making street map would be useful to them? Yeah, I mean, I've seen a lot of the overhead, uh, like, especially kind of distribution pile and stuff like that, and we're obviously on the map already. I must admit, it's not something I've looked into in any great detail, but it, in terms of utilities in the UK, who are a, a big customer base for us, they do send their data to lots of councils and things like that, just because if anyone's digging up the pavement, it's kind of in their interest to tell them, look, there's a big cable right below you. Um, I, I'm not exactly sure of the legal TCCs uh, surrounding that, so it, it may be an angle that we could look at. Uh, I don't know exactly if, in terms of if you think of that as a topographic map and in the context <coughs> of something similar to the Ordnance Survey data, I mean, it, I don't know if like underground cables and things would really have a place for it, but perhaps things that are well, visual, like yeah, the towers and things like that. that. Thing there, I'm wondering if like, it can help you, like if companies have their data already, they maybe mm. don't need to Yeah, I mean, I would say they're a bit schizophrenic, they're quite protective and we have to sign non-disclosure agreements about using the data, etc, etc, but uh, I think if you are someone who digs up payments, then they would quite happily send you them, because for safe digging purposes, really.